the NCPD. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, good morning. Good morning. My name is Anki Guta. I'm a journalist and a moderator, and it's my pleasure to be hosting this auspicious event for you this day. Uh, allow me to make this request that we please put our mobile phones on silent now as we begin the formal part of our meeting. Let us all now please rise for the national anthem, followed by our opening prayer led by Miss Adelaide Minor. I think we all know the words to our national anthem. mighty name of Jesus, we come before your throne this morning in humility and with thanksgiving in our hearts, O oh God, for who you are and for all that you have done for us. We want to thank you for the gift of life. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of good health. We thank you, Jehovah Lord, for loving us so much that you have enabled us to see this new day in our lives. And Father Lord, we welcome your presence to be in our midst, even as we start our meeting, Lord. Just as Moses said that if your presence was not going with them, they would not live wherever they were, we also say that God, if your presence is not with us, we cannot be able to move. And we pray that Lord, may you cover us with the presence of your Holy Spirit, that he may guide us through even as we start, that he may move with us even as we go on, and be with us even at the end. We pray that God, you release your blessings upon each one of us, upon our leadership, upon Jehovah Lord, each and every Kenyan. We pray that Lord, you may remember our country, even as we discuss the issues that affect each one of us. Lord God Almighty, help us to know that it is only you who can see us through. Father, we pray for your understanding, for your knowledge, and even for your wisdom, even as we do this. May you be glorified, be honored, and be adored. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you. Well, indeed, it is my pleasure to welcome you today to this event, which launches two critical reports that address some of the biggest questions of our time in relation to human growth and human progress. And so to that end, please help me welcome 
With applause this morning, the Director General of the National Council for Population and Development, Dr. Mohammed Sheikh, to officially welcome us and make his opening remarks. Sir, good morning and welcome. Thanks. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today is a very good day. It's a Friday, 27th Friday, October 2023. Why don't you just greet your neighbor, the one sitting next, right on your side. Just say hi. And just say welcome to the state of the world population and the state of the Kenyan population. The human beings, you know, uh, nature by nature, we are very interactive human beings, isn't it? So sometimes when you meet strangers, you sit like this, it's not good. It's just good to greet. You always start with greetings, isn't it? So let me start by greeting the colleagues and the friends and partners who are here. Good morning again. Good morning. I first want to acknowledge the representative of our peers, our principal secretary for State Department of Economic Planning, Mr. James Muhati. He was supposed to be with us this morning, but... Uh, uh, he is with the CS in Mombasa. In fact, he was supposed to travel to join us this morning, but he could not make it. So he sent his representative, our economic secretary, uh, EPS, we call the economic planning secretary, uh, Mr. Timothy Kago. So welcome, sir. Welcome to this uh, launch. I also, also want to acknowledge the representative uh, of the UNFPA representative, uh, Mr. Thomas Anderson. Welcome. I want to acknowledge the presence of the Director General, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, uh, my friend, uh, Mark Donald Obudo, welcome. I want to acknowledge all colleagues and friends and partners, and my sister from Maria Stokes, and the representative of other PSS and other departments. I just want to say welcome to this uh, very important function of uh, meeting. And I just want to say, I want this opportunity to thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Annually, uh, the world uh, you know, celebrates the state of the world population. The same is also uh, adopted, and also uh, a report is prepared by countries. So this year, the world population, uh, last year I think we celebrated 8 billion people. Uh, so there was a report of the 8 billion. But this 2023, the world, without 8 billion, we have a new report prepared by again the world uh, the, the UNFPA and its partners. So Kenya has adopted the same program and the same uh, report, and we have a report that we're going to launch this morning. And the the, the title or the, what do you call the the title of this report is anxieties. And these anxieties we are talking about is not anything else. It's about the population dynamics that is changing across, across the world. Globally, you can see that there is an aging population somewhere in another part of the world. There is a youthful population somewhere here in Africa, and there are many dynamics within this population. There is an urbanization that the people move. The issues to do with the migration and movement of people, the issues to do with aging population, youthful populations, economic and poverty, wars and crises. So all these anxieties are reported that we prepared. We want to share with you this report and this morning. I don't want to dwell in that report because we're going to have a panel discussion. We are going to have presentations from our team. So mine is just to take this opportunity to warmly welcome you to this state of the Kenyan population and the state of the world population. Is it a good place to be? Yes. I am sure it's a good place to be this morning. I want you to enjoy this function. Relax. It's a breakfast meeting. Enjoy your time. You can talk to your neighbor. Discuss with your neighbor. What's about this state of the world population? But us is just to share with you the state of the world population and the state of the Kenyan population. So at this juncture, I just want to say welcome and enjoy our function this morning. And back to you, Karu Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I request assistance with the lectern now. And thank you for setting such a pleasant tone, didn't he? On the kind of and nature of discussion that we want to have this morning. I appreciate it. So we're going to drive, uh, dive rather straight into these two reports that are highlighted on the screen behind me. I know, and for my colleagues in the media who are here filming this event, one of the words that unfortunately we have used often when talking about the population boom is something like a ticking time bomb. Have you heard that phrase in news reports? 
and the kind of mindset that we have uh, concerning population. So these are some of the questions we're going to address. Is that the right perspective or is it not? We want to dive into the reports and I want to welcome now Ezekiel Ngure. He is a population and data analyst. He joins us now to present the very first report, the State of the World Population Report. Please let's welcome him with a round of applause. I'm Ezekiel Gure. I work with UNLPA in the area of population and development. And within a very short time, I'm going to give you a highlight of the state of world population report. And for now, I know you know the title. It's the eight billion lives, infinite possibilities, a case for reproductive uh, lives and choices. And I'll start from where the DG has actually highlighted what happened in November last year, the population eclipsed 8 billion. And as UNLPA and other stakeholders, we provided more information on the fact of about of this eight population, uh, 8 billion population. And what the facts are, is that more new bones are surviving, and also we are seeing that from 1990, global lifespans have increased by nearly a decade. And in all the world, you can be able to see that we have that life expectancy going up. Again, the average fertility rates have fallen from five children per woman, uh, per woman in 19, from 1950 at today, which is start at 2.3. A sign of the control of individuals and having gained over their productive life. But this is the fact. These are the facts. This is what the population, uh, what we were to see in the media in our discussions. But what did we see? In the media, what was reported were different messages. Some were on overpopulation, especially like in Nigeria. Another one, a population type of, had it be avoided. We got another one. Is it important to have children? And all these publications from the media and from other sources brought what we may call the population anxiety. And therefore, it created or it emphasizes the myths that we always have. And these myths are on are, are people too many? Or are they too few? But when you look at the fact that we have, from the evidence, from the reports, from the uh, studies that we have, we have been able to see that from 1950 up to 2020, we can be able to see the population is projecting in a, what we may call st uh, st statistically, monotonically increasing without any part of it reducing. But the population growth is reducing. What does this mean? What it means is that the momentum of the population, and especially those who are entering the reproductive age, are actually going to push the population to increase uh, towards the higher figure. And that is what has happened. And in future, if you look at the other graph there, uh, it shows that in the next 25 years, the population or the countries that are contributing to a uh, population within the world is going to change. And this is more to the fertility levels and other factors that we may be able uh, to see later. And you can be able to see like China will be overtaken by India. In Africa, we are seeing countries like Democratic uh, Republic of Congo uh, 
increasing the population at a very high rate, and others that uh, we may be able to uh, be aware of from our own studies and what is happening within the world. Now, taking the advantage of its video, what happens from these uh, messages from media, from other people, UNFPA commissioned a study. And this study was done, uh, conducted in Brazil, Egypt, France, Hungary, India, Japan, Nigeria, and the United States. And the main thing was to understand what are the views of the government? What are the views of the policy makers? What are the views of the general public towards this issue of high fertility and uh, the issues of population? And from that, about 8,000 uh, people were reached out. And each and every country, the sample that was taken was representative. And therefore, these questions were able to analyze and see how can we be able to arrest the myths that are emanating from what we are hearing from uh, the media and also from other corners. And as you can see, is that globally, the facilities are held uh, they are actually believed by various uh, cadres of people uh, to be either too high, too low, about right, and all that. And you can be able to see uh, many countries actually were saying it's too high. And again, there are other people who don't know. Uh, this is a cohort that for us as people from population uh, studies, again, we can be able to see how we can be able to target that. But what came out from the study is that the exposure to media or rhetoric about population is linked to concern that the world population is too high. And this brought that in. The other <coughs> finding was very clear that for men, they see that the fertility rate is a problematic issue. More than women, if you look at all your right. But on the other side, women realize or they see as if the fertility is, they are okay, they are neutral. And this again brings now the issues of gender perspective on this population uh, fertility. When you look at when these uh, respondents were given about eight or 20 options to choose what are the three main concerns of population issues, the first one was economic, then environment, but more importantly, the sexual and reproductive health and human rights came that. And this directly talks to the needs that we have in our reports. Again, from what we usually get from population division, and these are questionnaires that are sent to government on about population policies and all that. They were also we also inquired from these reports, how does the countries perceive fertility vis-a-vis -vis the economic growth vis-a-vis -vis migration and the rest. And you can see many countries who have uh, policies, they actually talk about their policies are more on to lower the fertility rates. Others, they're increasing from 1976 to 2019. You can see the middle part uh, they want to raise. So these are countries that they seem to have a lower fertility or declining fertility. And then we have others who just want to maintain this. And these bring the perspective of how governments then produce or develop their policies to be able to see how the population interacts with the other issues of development. When you look at those countries with policies and others who do not have policies uh, to influence fertility rates, you'll be able to see that Countries with no policies, they have a high democra uh, democracy edict. And then you also find that for those who do not have population policy, they have a uh, human freedom edict higher than that. But this is mainly self-reported information. And therefore, what we can say is that the analysis of these pol policies, we cannot be able to say that the policies are good or bad. However, we were able to look at the relationship between fertility and policies in various development edicts. And when you go and dig deep in the report, you'll be able to see that the population policies 
The country that have both pension policies, they are actually more uh, in this area. Uh, they are more influencing the development aspect of the population, uh, of, the, of the country. And therefore, the first myth that is tackled by the report is, are we too many within the world? And this question now brings in, does the high population affect or contribute to address conflicts over resources, hunger, diseases, and the rest. However, we have the fact uh, from the statistics that we have that about two thirds of the people live in a place of sub replacement facility. And then for the next 25 years I have, we have been able to say earlier that all, about two thirds of the population growth will be driven by past growth. That's what I'm talking about, the momentum in that. And therefore, if you look at the environmental aspect of population and whether the high population affects uh, the environment, you'll be able to see that those people with low fertility, the lead here, actually emit lesser carbon per capita. And therefore, this is a debate that this report will be able to help you understand and be able to articulate the issues that we have. The other myth is, are we too few? And this, we are basing it on, they have been that made of two replacement level of 2.1 uh, fertility rates. But as you find is that many countries have experienced 2.1 below uh, fertility rates uh, since 1970, but have still grown due to migration. And therefore, the report again look at how can we be able to relate the population growth with migration, and this is what we are looking at in that graph, that there are countries who want to maintain the migration uh, policies, but others, they want to, re to reduce migration and also increase the fertility. But by the end of the day, is that the country's population, grow, uh, population will grow, either because of fertility for those who are within like the areas of Africa, but in other countries where they are experiencing replacement rate of 2.1 or below, they are going to grow because of the migration. And this brings the, 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 possible, the possibility of ethno-nationalism, which actually now a, a bigger debate at uh, the, the global north. A good example, you'll be able to find that if you relate this graph, this is the global variation of replacement level. And you see a country like Nigeria down here, and you refer it to the earlier uh, presentation of the slide that was saying the population is going to be higher. Then you'll be able to see there is some similarities that when you have a higher replacement level, then we have a higher population. But again, from these countries, more out migration is going to the one countries that have lower investment levels. We are there to see how does the reproductive health just comes in. And this is where we have that. All countries have to uh, ensure that this reproductive health right uh, can be a solution to this. And this is whereby we need to ask our Self, the right questions. Instead of asking how too many or too few, instead we should ask ourselves whether the people, especially women, are able or freely make their 